my name is Jillian Warren, and I will be looking at the effect of textual and pictorial representation on learning ability with interactive tangibles. So how many of you remember playing with blocks as a kid or in the classroom, something like that? Okay. How many of you have played with an iPhone or some sort of other touch interface? Okay, most of you. <laughs> I would assume that. Um, well, basically, there's been a lot of new research trying to combine physical object play with interactive digital systems. And this, these are typically referred to as tangible user interfaces, or TUIs, um, to create better learning. So we now really have the ability to create really dynamic systems that allow for real-time feedback for users um, based on the manipulation of physical objects. And this justification comes from two main ideas that we learn naturally through our senses, so things like touch, and we learn a lot better um, through active engagement with material um, as opposed to being a passive recipient. Um, the nice thing is, is there has been a push recently to really base TUI designs on a theoretically grounded framework. So say we have a theory, um, so we design the system based on that theory, but we also have material that you're supposed to learn through interacting with the system itself. So you're given a pretest, you use the system, you're given a post-test, and then basically the way that it works is if you got better, then there was more learning as a result of that. Um, there seem to be obvious problems with just using this methodology alone. Um, so what is the problem then? Well, the first issue is we don't actually know if people got better as a result of the TUI itself or if people could have learned as well on other systems. Um, the other issue that I'm going to be focusing on today is we don't actually know if all parts of that system contributed to the learning process because they're basically just looking at the system as a whole right now. So do the components of the system actually work as expected according to the original theory predictions? So essentially, we would like to be able to really find the weakest links in these systems um, through empirical methods and either make those better or remove them if they don't contribute um, to the learning process. So how did this all come about? Um, the lab that I work in has a TUI game that is used to teach children about the environment and sustainability. And in the original design, we were debating between using physical stamps like these or um, digital drag and drop stamps. And they decided to go with the physical stamp because digital stamps took a really long time for people to learn. And therefore, these were taking up cognitive processes that could actually be used towards learning the material instead of um, learning how to use the system itself. So in the first project, the Towards Utopia project, the stamps only had an image on them to show people the functionality. And the new stamps have um, text and an image. So this got me thinking, are all physical stamps actually created equally. Um, there hasn't been any empirical research actually looking at whether the uh, text and image group or the text group or just an image group would be better. Um, so according to dual coding theory, textual information is better remembered when supplemented by images. So in my experiment, people were allowed to learn the functionalities of the stamps given to them, and then they were given a textual prompt discussing um, the functionality and they had to choose which stamp was associated with that. So according to this, a text and image stamp you would assume would be faster and people would be able to put more cognitive processes towards actually learning material. The issue is that there's some conflict here because other research shows that adding an image doesn't always necessarily make learning better. Um, it can actually conflict with your own mental model construction. So when you read something, you create an image in your mind of what that text is saying. And if you were then presented with an image that conflicts with um, the presentation, uh, if you look at an image and that conflicts with the image that you created in your mind, then it could actually make you slower. So in this case, the text or image group or the image group may not necessarily be faster. Also, if two representations sort of allow for the same information to be learned, it could mean that um, one representation is actually more efficient um, so text people may be faster and therefore have more time to focus on the material instead of learning the functionality or image could maybe be more efficient. So I had 24 participants and I had three different treatments. There was an image only group, a text only group, and a text and image group and eight participants for each. Um, I wanted to look at, is there a difference between groups for average time? Is there a difference between groups for accuracy? And was there learning in any group? 
group. So did people get faster between period one and period five, the last period? There was no significant difference between groups for time. And there was also no significant difference between groups for accuracy. But I would like to point out that the variance for the text group in both accuracy and time was much lower than the groups with images. Um, and basically, this could sort of point out the idea that the representation in people's minds was actually conflicting with the representation that they had to choose from on the stamps. Um, was there learning in any group? All participants in all groups did show a significant difference in learning. So all groups, all participants in all groups did get faster from the last period from the first period. Um, however, the text only group had much, much lower average times despite significance um, in all periods as compared to the other groups. So for instance, in period one, uh, the text group um, on average completed in 37 seconds and got better um, in period five to a 21 second difference. Whereas in the other ones, they started in the 40s range and ended at close to 30. So in conclusion, the first step I really wanted to look at was sort of shedding light on these conflicting theories on representation especially as they relate to tangible design because dual coding theory really hasn't been looked at much in this area. And also I wanted to look at issues concerning the lack of empirically grounded um, methods into a design and research. It's great that we have grounded theory, but we really need to add more tools to that set to ensure that what we're trying to test, learning, is actually happening. So ideally in the future, I would like to run more participants and also since my lab deals mainly with children, it would be ideal to test on children since they have different cognitive processes. And that is it. Thank you. And if anyone has questions at all, um, I don't know if we have time to answer those, but you could always ask me yeah. after class. Can let maybe do one or two questions while you're setting up your computer. <coughs> So what, what was the difference between period one and five? What were the tasks? Were they the same? Um, so basically the way the experiment was set up was they went to a learning station for five minutes where they got to learn the functionality of each stamp. And then they had five different periods that were the same task, but the stamp order and the prompts given to them were randomized each period. Um, and that was basically to make sure that people weren't simply memorizing um, which would have greatly affected time, right? Um, people would have probably had much more significant time differences if they were able to memorize the order. Um, so basically, a prompt came up on the screen, and they had to physically touch the stamp that was associated with that prompt, and then proceed to the next prompt, six in total, one for each stamp. Thank you.